to Hong Kong now, where a court has convicted two journalists of sedition. The former editors of Stand News, which has now been shut down, had been accused of inciting hatred against Beijing. Now, this marks the first such ruling against journalists since the 1997 handover of the former British colony to China. Chung Poi Kun arriving at court. The former editor-in-chief of Stand News in no doubt about the seriousness of this case and the likely verdict. Both he and another editor, Patrick Lam, were arrested in December 2021. They were charged with conspiracy to publish and reproduce seditious publications, which they both denied. On the same day, the offices of Stand News were raided by police, with computers and other materials taken away as evidence. The media outlet that began in 2014 was forced to shut down. A bitter end to a Chinese language website that had become so important during the pro-democracy protests that began in 2019. Protests that both China and the Hong Kong authorities saw as a national security threat before finally stamping them out. Press freedom in Hong Kong has been under threat for some time. The popular newspaper Apple Daily has also been forced to close. Its former owner, the media tycoon Jimmy Lai, is already in jail and is still facing other charges. Now that these stand news editors have been found guilty of sedition, they too can expect prison sentences. The latest example of Beijing's crackdown on free speech in Hong Kong. And we can hear from the head of an English language news outlet still reporting from Hong Kong. Tom Grundy runs Hong Kong Free Press. Glad to have you back on DW, Tom. Now, conspiracy to publish and reproduce seditious publications. Can, can you tell us what Stan News specifically did according to the court? Well, prosecutors said that Stan News had tried to incite hatred against the government with content that promoted radical political ideologies. 17 uh, articles were in question. These weren't editorials, by the way, uh, but interviews with Democrats, profiles um, of activists, uh, a feature about uh, the protests and even a hard news piece about a rights prize. But uh, 11 of these 17 articles today were found to be seditious. Judge Kwok saying that uh, Chung and Lam knew of and agreed with the seditious intention of the articles, and they provided Stan News as a publication platform to incite hatred against Hong Kong and China. Now, Stan News did have a pro-democracy slant. It arose from the aftermath of the 2014 pro-democracy umbrella movement. It rose to prominence during the 2019 unrest and protests and was very much a go-to source for demonstrators on the street. But as the COVID-19 restrictions and the new security law uh, swept those protests away, a year later, in 2021, uh, um, the Stan News newsroom was raided by 200 national security police. About nine million US dollars worth of their assets were frozen. And Stan News deleted its website uh, shortly afterwards. Tom, based on what you've seen in Hong Kong since 2019, what sort of sen sentencing could they now face? Well, Chung and Lam have already spent a year behind bars awaiting trial, and just uh, an hour or two ago, they were both granted bail ahead of sentencing on September 26. Interestingly, the sedition offence has been upgraded, whereby you can now get eight, uh, seven years in prison or 10 years if there's a foreign forces involved. This new Article 23 out this year does mean that when, if they do prison time, as we'll learn next month, they will not be eligible for any early release. But uh, unclear yet um, what it's going to look like, and I'd hesitate to uh, speculate until the hearings are over. How does this case impact what remains of press freedom in the city? Well, the National Security Police top 
top cop um, Steve Lee just said that this will clarify matters. There are no topics are banned, um, but you cannot publish with seditious intention. But to be honest, uh, every newsroom now will be impacted and will have to uh, think hard about what um, writers they have on their website and what exactly they will be writing. Reporters of that borders, the EU and the local journalist association have already spoken out. Uh, reporters of that border saying that this sets a very dangerous precedent for what remains of press freedom in the city. And it comes, you know, over the past few years where we've seen a thousand journalists out of work, about 10 news outlets shut down, um, and and Hong Kong just tumbling in the international press freedom indices. Tom Grundy, founder of the Hong Kong Free Press News Outlet, joining us from Hong Kong. Tom, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you.